If you have fluid issues like hypertension, um, high blood pressure, um, edema, swelling, or worst case scenario, congestive heart failure, when we understand how the body's fluid compartments work and how they interact with each other and how insulin affects them, that can lead us to a solution. Um, some of you seem to like it when I talk about chemistry, so I'm going to do that now. And for those of you who don't like it so much, stay to the end because as a reward, we're going to have our very first YouTube contest. Our bodies are about 60% water because almost all chemical reactions that make us go take place dissolved in water. But water is broke into separate compartments in the body. So I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit here. This is a pint jar because I'm at home and I have ball jars and I don't have beakers. So, and several hours ago, I put a couple drops of blue food coloring in this, which you can see, and I'm me, so of course I chose blue. And um, over time, that I didn't stir this or anything, I just put it in there. It did something we call diffuse, diffuse. It diffused through the jar so that pretty much everywhere in the jar has the same amount of food coloring. So here's a jar without it. And if I just add a couple drops, you can see it's already starting to spread. And if I gave it a couple hours, it would look identical to the other one. Okay. That's what things usually do. And we have three electrolytes I'm going to discuss in this series are sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And um, if they were all in the same jar, we'd have the same amounts everywhere, but that's not how our bodies work. When we go back to the uh, original jar and the water, now this is going to look real obvious. <laughs> um, obviously none of the blue dye got in this jar because it's a separate compartment. And I mean, that's like I said, very obvious. What's not quite so obvious is this. Sometimes we have too much water in one compartment and none in another. So it's actually possible to have swelling and edema in one compartment and be completely dehydrated in another. That's not as obvious. Um, okay, so generally speaking, we have intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, which is separated by cell membranes. So if this were a cell, there is fluid that's inside and there's all the fluid that's outside. Lots of kind all around. Okay. The cells are actually floating in a particular one, but we'll get to that in a minute. In general, for your body to work properly, it needs a lot of sodium out here, outside of the cell. And it only needs a little bit of potassium out here. And in here, it needs a little bit of sodium, but it needs lots and lots and lots of potassium for everything to work right. Okay, so the cell, your body has to overcome diffusion, which is why it's got these two compartments, the outside and the inside. But sometimes, like if there's too much sodium in here, it has to be able to get it out and it has to be able to get potassium in. And it does that. It has a enzyme that sits on the top of the membrane that is called the sodium potassium pump. And this is how it overcomes 
diffusion but and can keep pushing the sodium out and pulling the potassium in okay so if the various compartments there's a lot of compartments although I'm I've been breaking it down into just the two um, inside cells and outside but generally the way it works is when you eat or drink anything it's in your GI system and it gets absorbed into your circulatory system your bloodstream and then your blood carries that to something we call interstitial fluid all that means when I say interstitial fluid is cells are floating in some liquid and that's interstitial fluid and the circulatory system will bring oxygen and nutrients there that the cell can take in and the cell will then put out um, carbon dioxide and waste products into the interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid is picked up by the lymphatic system and then or sometimes directly by the circulatory system but the lymphatic system what it picks up gets dumped into the circulatory system so it's all back in your bloodstream and then your blood is filtered by your um, kidneys that have rules about what they're going to keep and discard and then that is goes into your bladder and out of your body so when we break down the fluid compartments we have the circulatory system interstitial fluid intracellular fluid and then back to interstitial fluid lymphatic system circulatory system and we get rid of extra through the kidneys filtering and the bladder um, that's why you have to keep drinking like every day so when insulin is high they give the kidneys specific instructions they say hang on to sodium and water we need lots of sodium and water that's what insulin tells the kidneys and that causes high blood pressure um, if the high blood pressure happens for a while eventually it like backs up into the interstitial fluid some interstitial fluid gets returned by the veins but some by the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system in humans does not have a pump like the circulatory system does so it's not as strong and fluid can get backed up in the lymphatic system which some of you who have edema may have been told you have lymphedema that's what it means and lymphedema can cause your arms legs or even your abdomen to be swollen with too much fluid and um, it can also affect the heart which can lead to congestive heart failure which by the way congestive heart failure doesn't mean your heart stops it just means it can't keep up it's failing so one of the problems with this system is when they test your blood to see how you're doing they basically just draw your blood from the circulatory system this outside area so when they look at how much sodium potassium and magnesium you make they're really just looking at out here so the sodium number is pretty close right but since most of the potassium is in here they don't really know how much potassium you have in like your whole body amount and pretty much it's the same for magnesium so really they're they're just pretty much testing if your sodium is okay for potassium and magnesium to really know that you're not deficient we need something called an RBC test what that means is when they take the blood out of your arm they spin it in a centrifuge and the plasma separates and they can pour it off so they just have the red blood cells and if they break the red blood cells they can count they can then measure the potassium or magnesium inside of the cell the bit that's really relevant to knowing if you're deficient or not so how this ends up leading to congestive heart failure takes a little bit of explanation okay so the heart is moving fluid through the circulatory system 
and the heart almost has two separate systems. One system sends blood to the lungs to get oxygen and that returns the oxygen back to the heart, which the heart needs some of too. And the other system sends oxygenated blood to the rest of the body and gets back oxygen depleted blood. So if the left ventricle isn't strong enough, blood can pool in the extremities, especially the feet, adding to lymphedema. If the left ventricle isn't strong enough to push the fluid all the way back to the heart, it can make your lymphedema even worse, um, particularly if there's fluid in your feet and legs, um, which this is called venous insufficiency. It's sort of separate from lymphedema. Um, I had it really bad at one point where my veins were clogged and three of my toes went black. They had to put some stents in my leg to straighten that out to get room for that to get back. But I still had lymphedema after that. Um, but the much worse case, in my opinion, it's worse than swollen feet, <laughs> is when the right ventricle is too weak because fluid ends up building up in your chest, causing shortness of breath. In my case, the first time I had an episode of congestive heart failure, I woke up unable to breathe, which I can tell you right now is very terrifying. I was hospitalized and um, put on a diuretic, which is a drug that basically makes you pee a lot. And I was told to limit how much fluid I drank and limit my sodium intake. But it turns out <laughs> I fixed my hypertension, edema, and congestive heart failure by massively reducing insulin because insulin causes the kidneys to retain water and sodium. Once my insulin went down, I fixed my fluid problems. So the next logical question you might have is, how do you reduce insulin? And if you join me in the playlist to the left, I'll explain that. But for now, I'm going to uh, tell you about the contest I promised. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Anyone who knows the answer can, or finds out the answer, can put it in a comment below and I will randomly choose from the correct answers and you can get um, win one of these six journals. Okay, um, so here's the question for you. I claim two things are necessary to reverse diabetes. One of them is a low carb ketogenic diet. What's the second one? Guess below and maybe you'll win.